Today I'm going to show you the very basics of getting started with your sewing journey. I'm going to start out by sharing the tools you need and then the very basics and then I'm going to share some projects at the end of this video that will help you get started. My best advice is to just start. It can be so overwhelming to not know how to get to the end result that you're looking for, but you'll never get there if you don't start. Let's get started with the very basics on how to get started sewing. I'm going to mention some tools in this video and in the description you can find links to everything. My rule of thumb is to start simple and not overwhelm yourself with a long list of tools you need. So I'm going to mention just the very basics and what I really believe that you'll need to get started. First, you're going to want a great sewing machine. From here on out, I'm going to be mentioning projects that you'll want a sewing machine for. Of course, you can sew things by hand, but I'm just assuming from you watching this video that you're gonna want a sewing machine. So I'm personally using a Baby Lock Grace and for you, I would recommend starting with a Baby Lock Joy. The Baby Lock Joy will have all that you need to get started, and it is at a great price point, under $200. The Singer 4423 is just a classic, heavy-duty sewing machine, and this is a great way to get started. It's under $200 and I highly recommend it if you just want a very basic machine that will stand the test of time. Another trusted machine is the Janome 2212. It comes with a lot of extras within it and it's also under $200. Just note, you don't need a serger to get started, but if you're looking for one, I recommend the Brother Serger and I have it myself. I love it. It makes things so much easier. It's so great if you're making a lot of clothing that you'll be washing and wearing often, but just know you don't need a serger to get started. It's just a recommendation for the future. The next tool that you'll need is scissors. So you want a good pair of scissors and these will only be used for fabric. You want fabric scissors and you can write on them, tie a piece of string around them, just make sure that you and everyone that is going to come in contact with these scissors know that they're only for fabric. So I actually have a pair that are supposed to be for fabric only, but through the years they kind of got picked up and I don't use them for fabric anymore. So I have my own fabric scissors and I, I protect them. So when you have fabric scissors, you don't want to use them on paper or anything else especially plastic because it's going to dull the blade. A good pair of fabric scissors will last you years and you can also get them sharpened if you need. Moving right along to a straight edge. I love the clear straight edge, but for a while I used just a right angle and that is all you need to cut out straight lines. I love this clear one because it helps measuring things a little bit better and I think it's under the quilting section so keep an eye out for that when you're at the fabric store. You're also going to need a seam ripper. I use this on probably every project because you'll get going, you're not thinking about it, and then you'll sew something you're not supposed to. But it's really easy to use. You'll need a seam ripper. Pick one up, they're a couple bucks. And you'll also need some pins, especially if you're making something out of a pattern. Great to cut fabric and pin things together when you're about to sew. So definitely pick up some pins. Ironing your garment along the way as you're sewing is going to yield a much better result. So you can use an iron. I just use my home iron. Nothing fancy, you can get a heavy duty iron if you're interested in that. But a good iron will help your project turn out so much better. You'll also want a measuring tape and a rotary cutter is also great for cutting long lines and some people prefer to cut out all of their patterns with a rotary cutter. It's up to you. You can also use scissors, but I definitely recommend the rotary cutter for cutting out straight lines with your straight edge that I mentioned earlier. Now let's move on to the basics of getting started. To thread your machine, you're going to start with your thread on its spool, and then you're going to guide it throughout the whole machine following the numbers that are indicated on your machine and go all the way to the needle. Every machine is different, but the basic principles are the same. Don't forget to add the bobbin and make sure it's the same color as your thread. So you can wind the bobbin beforehand and you do the same thing you would to thread the machine and you just follow the numbers and allow the machine to do its thing by winding the bobbin for you. I recommend having different bobbins on hand when you're switching out colors 
so it makes things a little easier and you can save colors and not waste that thread. A straight stitch is the very basic stitch that you're going to need when sewing anything. You'll definitely change up the stitch depending on what project you're doing, but the straight stitch will take you very far. So to start out, you're going to slide your fabric under the presser foot and lower the presser foot. You're wanting to make sure with whatever pattern or project you're following, if it mentions the seam allowance, you wanna follow this. So you're gonna line up your fabric and the presser foot and the needle where the seam allowance shows. So if it's half an inch seam allowance or a quarter of an inch or five eighths, you wanna line it up and usually on your machine, there is a little ruler or measuring tape to show you. And if not, you can just take out your measuring tape that you have and measure where the needle is to the end of the fabric. To start out, you always want to do a back stitch. So you're going to start by pressing the pedal with your foot and going slow, so gently press it like you're pressing the gas pedal in your car and you're going to start stitching. It's going to go very slow at first. All you want to do is make two to three stitches and then you're going to stop, press the reverse button on your machine and go back two to three stitches the same length and then you're going to go forward and keep sewing. You're going to do this when you reach the end of your project and you're going to reverse stitch once more and this is going to lock your stitch in place so it doesn't unravel or come undone. When you're starting out doing your straight stitch, you want to go really slow. If your machine has like a speed regulator on it, I recommend going to the very bottom speed and going just one stitch at a time, lining up the stitch with the seam allowance that you originally started with. So doing this is just gently guiding the fabric through the presser foot at a slow pace, not gripping the fabric, not pushing it through, just allowing the machine to guide it through. The machine will do the work and all you have to do is guide it. So these same principles work for the zigzag stitch as well. This is a stitch that I recommend you looking for when you're buying a machine because it will come in handy in a lot of projects. So when you're doing a zigzag stitch, you'll still do the reverse stitch, you'll go slow, you'll guide the fabric and let the machine do its work. Another technique that a pattern might call for or a project might call for is just making notches. So this is just taking your scissors and making a little snip at the edge of your fabric and this is either to line up the pattern or it's to make the curve lie flatter and you want to do this your project will usually show you where you need to do this we all mess up a seam here and there or on every project and so you'll want a seam ripper like i mentioned earlier so you just take your seam ripper and flatten out the seam so you want to carefully insert the tip into your seam that has already been sewn and just carefully guide it through and add a little bit of pressure and that's going to rip those seams apart. You can also flip it where this little red side is on the bottom and this is going to make sure you're not puncturing the fabric in the wrong place and creating a hole. Make sure you're going slow and then at the end you can pull out all of the extra threads. Now I want to suggest a few projects to get you started. With any project, it's really about starting and going through the detailed instructions and reading over them before you get started and starting with a project that you're going to be excited about, excited to pick back up, excited to finish. And so that's why I'm going to recommend a lot that I've already made here on videos because they have detailed instructions for you some come with patterns and in them you're going to learn some basic skills that are going to carry over to every project that you make from now on first project is a tote bag i'm going to insert the video now on how to make this tote bag here is how to make a super simple oversized tote bag you'll need one yard of fabric and you're going to cut that to measure 21 inches by 36 inches Fold this rectangle in half and from the bottom of the fold, you're going to measure one and a half inches up and then one and a half inches over. You're gonna cut the slit and then sew along the sides from the top of the tote down to the cut you just made. Repeat this on both sides and then you're going to open up the tote where you are flattening out 
the seam on the bottom and then you're going to make this a little flatter and sew along the sides. Now from the top of the bag, you're going to fold over once about a quarter of an inch and then fold it again another quarter of an inch. Then you're going to sew along the entire edge of the top of the tote. To make the straps, you're going to cut two strips that measure 22 inches by three inches. Fold these straps in thirds and then fold them once more onto itself. Sew along the side and you'll have two long straps. Then you'll attach this to the top of your tote bag and make sure you're just securing it by sewing it in an X and rectangle formation. Finally, you will turn your bag right side out and you're all finished. I like to add a organizer to my bag so I can find things a little bit easier and move my organizer from different bags that I use at different times. If you're making a project for a little baby or a little child, I suggest the Rhodes overalls. These are so simple to make. And once you make them, you'll learn not only how to put a simple piece of clothing together that your child can wear, you'll learn elastic casing and how to add elastic to any garment. You'll learn how to add a button, which is not as scary as it sounds. You'll learn how to do a pocket. And all of these things are included with the pattern there's a video for it on our channel, and you can also find the pattern at runeyclothing.com. A birthday crown is also super simple to make. This is gonna take you less than an hour if you're a beginner. It might only take you 20 minutes. This is a great project learning how to sew points and making sure they're pointed. This will also show you how to add binding and add a little ribbon detail to the back. So easy for the beginner and it can be easily customized. If you're looking for a project for a woman or for yourself, I recommend the Ada Lounge set. This is going to make you feel so confident in your sewing journey because you're going to learn how to add a neck binding. You can add pockets, you can make them in shorts or pants. It's a super simple tutorial to follow and it's great for the beginner. And for this project, if you're a beginner, I recommend starting with a linen or cotton fabric before you start with a knit. And then if you want a project that you're gonna work on for a little bit longer of a period, but is still beginner friendly, I recommend Arkantha Quilt. This is a beginner quilt that's also hand stitched and stitched my machine. So in this, you're going to learn how to make a basic quilt and you're also gonna learn how to use basic stitching for embroidery. You'll learn how to change the embroidery thread color and you'll also just have a beautiful quilt for yourself or a baby. So hopefully now you know where to get started when you're first starting out sewing. If you're looking for more ideas, just look around our channel or our blog for some inspiration. I'll be back next Monday with a new video and I hope today helped you just get started on the right foot. If it did, you can like this video and I'll see you next week.